welcome to today's webinar. My name is Ben Kirkland and I'm an application engineer here at Sigma Tech. Today we will be going over scrap and crop cut settings for Trump lasers specifically. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So we'll go over why we want to use a scrap or a crop cut and then we'll also go into the difference between the two. So one of the first reasons you'll want to use a scrap or a crop cut function is the increased efficiency when it comes to uh, time to unload parts and material from the machine bed. Uh, these processes make it a lot easier, um, not only for your operators, but it makes it easier for uh, post unload as well. Um, the smaller skeleton sections make it easier for the machine operators to remove and store that excess uh, or remnant material that you create. Um, and then those remnant sheets can be kept for future nests and managed within Sigma Nest uh, if you have the inventory control module. And the faster processing of sheet unloading reduces the downtime between your programs and really increases machine runtime. So which one should you use? Uh, crop cutting uh, is designed for sectioning off a portion of the sheet to be kept and used for a later program. So uh, if you keep and maintain an inventory uh, of any kind of skeletons or remnants, uh, this is going to be a good option. So uh, if you keep that inventory, crop cut can be used to create prime sheets. So that's any kind of rectangular or square geometry, length by width, um, or remnants with additional geometry to maximize that reusable material. Um, so if you manage your sheets and inventory within Sigma Nest, crop cut with remnant creation, and that's if you have the inventory control module, can help automatically maintain an accurate library of your stock material as well as remnant and future remnants. Um, so that's a really nice feature, uh, and it's really good to utilize um, everything we have available to maximize your efficiency out on the machine as well. Scrap cut, um, just like... Uh, the, the crop cut here, it can quickly break down the sheet skeleton. So instead of really focusing on the, the material that you're keeping, this is more of a skeleton base operation. Uh, it's going to break those down into more manageable sections. So it can be set to, to section the sheet either vertically, horizontally, or both. As you can see in the picture over there on the right hand side, you can see it's got both vertical and horizontal cuts there. Um, so you'll notice with some of those settings, you'll see kind of how it has a little bit of a gap around uh, the part edges. So all of this can be set. Um, like it says, to allow small tabs to be set um, on sheet and part edge to keep the sheet together, but easily foldable um, for part separation or sheet separation after the program is completed. Um, so this can minimize um, unload time because you can keep everything together on the sheet until you want to unload it and, and remove the parts, or you can set it so that those parts come free right away and you just have to lift the skeleton up and off, fold it up, and toss it away. So a few of the different things we need to look for here is where we're going to apply these settings. So in the auto and C menu here, you get the option to set the crop and remnant uh, selections, but the option to scrap cut is not there. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look in Sigma Nest really quick and just take a look at the settings that are available uh, when we're going into the auto and C section. So first, uh, I just have the tutorial one, which is a basic workspace everybody should have available from the um, basic settings when you download the software. I do have it set up to a Trump True Laser 1030 there. Uh, already have it nested, you should see that I have a good amount of parts It's going to create a skeleton, and then I have a section that I could use to uh, create a remnant there as well with a crop cut. Um, so we'll go into the nesting in C tab here, and that first section we want to talk about is the auto and C section. So if we go in here, we're going to take a look at some of the settings under crop sheet. So this section right here with the, blue, with the green check mark. Um, so first of all, we'd have to have it set to automatic crop. So if we check, check that on, that's going to start giving us our options here. Um, now with that, trumps are a little bit more uh, particular about the settings that they use, uh, specifically with like lead-in types um, and how they're uh, approaching sheet edges and part edges. Um, so we, we'll go over that a little bit more here in a moment. But one of the main things we want to do is make sure we have a part offset. So that's going to be the offset away from the part. Um, so when it creates that either uh, whatever line you create here, crop line, as I have here, it's just going to create a vertical line. Um, if you need some more info on these, uh, you can give us a call at the support line or just a little uh, question mark in the top. We'll give a, a screen that will go through and actually give a visual representation of what each of these do. Um, but for today, just to keep it simple, we'll use just a crop line here. Um, I'm going to do just a, a half inch part offset just to make sure it stays away from my parts. I don't have any chance that it's going to interfere with that. Um, and then one of the features that we have to look for is this edge distance. So in a, in a slide here in a moment, I'll go over all the things that have to be set particularly with the trumps. Um, but just to kind of show you what we're setting here, I'm going to set my edge distance, my minimum percentage used. Now, this is a bit of a unique setting. It's basically saying what is the minimum 
uh, amount of the sheet left that I have to have to create a remnant. And I'm just going to say 99%. So it's saying that it can use 99% of the sheet and it still will create a crop line. And that's just for this demonstration. You can obviously set this to uh, whatever you would like. Um, for this particular uh, example, really quick, I'm not going to create a remnant, um, but I am going to go over this. So this reverse line lead-in is going to be set to a 0.1 uh, line length and then a 0.7 lead-out line length. Uh, and this is a very important step here is turn on this do height sensing. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to run a specific set of operations, uh, especially with this reverse line lead-in, uh, which again we'll go over here in just a moment. Um, that's going to keep us really safe when we're approaching that sheet edge. One other thing to just mention here really quickly um, is we can actually set the crop to go first. Now with scrap cutting, we have a little bit more um, control over the sequencing, but with crop cut, um, you're really only making that one cut uh, for the most part. So you can either tell it to go first or do it at the very end. Most of the time it's at the very end, but again, you have the option uh, to set that sequence uh, up and put it first in line. So if I just press OK here, You'll see that it applies my NC as well as my setting, and you'll see that this little uh, pierce point appears uh, off of the sheet edge, uh, and that's because of that reverse line lead-in. Um, and again, in a moment, we'll kind of go through that more, but this is just a basic example. You should see that this is about uh, what I set to 0.5 here. So if I select this and this, you'll see that I am 0.5 inches away from my part, which is exactly what we want. So we'll jump back in uh, to the PowerPoint here and just take a look. So the second option to apply our um, settings here is the nesting NC ribbon. So that's already where, where we were at when we got into the auto NC, uh, but it's a little farther to the right, depending on how you have your ribbon set up. It's right over here. So the only option that you may not have here is that remnant button. If you don't have the inventory control module, that'll be grayed out, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that in today's uh, examples. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply some NC. So this would be that if you went through your auto NC menu and you didn't apply crop um, or anything, this is just a base uh, NC nest here. We have our options for crop sheet as well as cut scrap. Um, so if we want to do, we could go in here and do crop sheet. Now this is going to be pretty much similar to what we just had uh, in the uh, auto and C window here, um, but we're going to dive a little deeper into this really quick just to explain a little bit more um, in the PowerPoint here. So with the Trump lasers, we have a little bit of difference between the um, fiber and CO2, um, just depending on the settings you have there. But as you can see here, some of these highlighted settings are what we really want to pay attention to. So in this section here, on the left-hand side, we're talking about the crop settings. And again, you can set that part of set to whatever you need to. The minimum percentage used can be whatever it needs to be for you. Um, but the main things we want to cover is this edge distance. So that's the distance that we're going to withhold the NC from the sheet edge. And then down here, we have our sheet lead-ins and sheet lead-out types. Now, again, we really want to focus on these. And most of the posts nowadays will throw an error if these settings are incorrect. And they actually won't output a flame-on process uh, if these aren't set correctly as well. And that's mainly a safety feature to make sure that you're not going to have the chances of crashing the head off the, off the sheet there. So the sheet lead-in type we want to use is the reverse line. Um, again, and we want to have that set to 0.1 with a sheet lead-out type of line and 0.7. Um, now, I know that in a current version right now, I believe there's a little bit of a bug. Sometimes you actually have to do, even if this is selected to reverse line, if these boxes are grayed out for the um, selectors to put in your variable, you just go back and drop that down, select it again, and those boxes should be allowed to be edited at that point. Um, so again, you want to do that and then set your height sensing. So do height sensing. So um, you can see that's just this menu here. Uh, the options on top here to say where you want to apply that. So on the current sheet, multiple sheets or all sheets. Um, and again, it's pretty much the same options as we had in our auto and C uh, minus the crop settings here. Um, but the next thing we want to take a look at is the cut scrap options. Um, so I know we kind of went over crop cutting and we'll jump back into scrap cutting here briefly. So the difference between crop and scrap, you can actually kind of see in the logos. The crop is meant to create um, really a remnant. It's not really focusing on the skeleton at all. Uh, it's just going to cut the skeleton off and kind of toss it to the side, whereas cut scrap is really meant to deal with the skeleton itself. So if I jump in here to the cut scrap options, 
you'll see we have some similar settings, but additional ones as well. You'll already notice some lines going through the nest here, and that's normal because we're actually uh, setting this with block length and block width. So if you think of cut scrap, it's basically just like kind of chopping up the skeleton or the, the sheet itself. So um, you'll notice the NC position, we have a few more options. Um, so first and last are just like they sound. You could do first and it's gonna cut all of these scrap lines before it cuts the actual parts out, um, which could be beneficial in some, in some situations. Uh, the second option is last, which is pretty typical. Um, progressive is actually gonna be as it cuts certain areas of the sheet, it'll go, through, go ahead and cut the scrap line as well. And then after part is actually gonna kind of be around specific parts. So it's gonna cut apart and then continue on. Um, and after part is kind of a mix of progressive and last. Um, so it's not gonna make it a, you know, a priority cut, but if it's there and it can make the cut as it's going through, it'll go ahead and do that. Um, the other options here, which we're not going to get too much into just the basic settings of, of crop because we're really just focusing on, on the, the Trump specific settings here. Um, you have your horizontal lead in and our vertical lead inside methods. I and mean, that's just basically telling you how you want it to um, move throughout the sheet. Um, a few other things just to be mindful of is you can do clamp avoidance if you're not if you have a machine with clamps. Um, but the, the first thing I want to go through here is this block length and block width, and these are tot totally variable to how you want to set it up. If you want to make smaller blocks, you can see these actually dynamically change as we're typing them in. Uh, so if we want to see how it would change the, the actual setup, we could do that. So if I wanted to put 15 for um, my width and 10 for my height, you can see it's going to kind of create that offset. Um, you could put it uh, just for um, width, or you could put it just for height. Uh, so if you wanted to section off the sheet that way as well. Um, so maybe you want three foot sections of your sheet. Um, that's going to be doing it this way. So every 36 inches, it'll create a crop line, or not a crop line, I'm sorry, a scrap line and basically cut it off. Um, but again, for this example, we'll just kind of go with a simple block setup. And like we saw here, there are specific uh, settings for our scrap cut as well. So we want to have that same reverse line. Uh, and that's pretty important. Whenever you have the option to use reverse line, we, we typically recommend it because it is the safest option for the lead-in. Um, it, it's just a really good method with that height sensing on um, to make sure that we don't take any chances of dropping or crashing the head off the sheet edge. So you'll see we have uh, a quarter inch uh, lead in with a 0.15 edge distance and 0.9 length there. So we'll go ahead and just make sure our settings here. And this is that thing I was telling you about just a moment ago. So if you hit this drop down, um, you'll see these actually come up. So we have that 0.25 set already. We have our 0.15 set already. And over here, if we click this again, uh, for the lead out, we'll just use 0.9 as well. And you'll notice again, I have my height sensing on, uh, and I'll turn this lead out the sheet edge off. Now below that, again, we have our settings. Um, so we'll jump back in here just to double check those. So it's again 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 and then this is the part edge setting. So this is how close it's getting to the parts. Now with the lasers, we can get pretty close without really messing with the uh, external edges of the parts. So we'll go ahead and set these really quick. So 0 0.05, 0 0.01 and 0.1 for the lead out or for the minimum cut length. We're not going to use a lead out for the parts themselves. So 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 reverse line. Um, so again, we'll do this. 0 0.05, 0 0.01. The lean light out or the lead out length is zero because we just aren't going to set anything. And then our minimum cut is going to be 0.1. Um, and then we'll go ahead and press OK. And again, you'll see we'll have those little point markers there, the little pierce markers uh, towards the sheet edge there. Um, and that's with that reverse line. So now you'll see. Um, that we should be keeping a pretty tight profile to the parts themselves. You'll see it gets close, but doesn't quite touch the parts. Um, we don't want to interfere with the parts themselves. We just want to make sure that when the skeleton's cut, um, that we're getting close enough that those parts can either break away or be really easily removed from the skeleton um, if they're going to still be attached. So this is another method you could partially tab parts in um, as well if you wanted to with that skeleton there. Um, and the sheet and the sheet edge as well. If you put a small uh, edge distance in there, um, we can make it so that the sheet stays together, uh, and then you can easily fold it out um, and break it up after. So we'll jump back into our settings here, and I won't go through the entire thing again. But there are some different settings for CO2 setups. Um, 
Again, there may not always be the, the reverse line option. If you think that your machine should have it or you've used it with another scenario and you don't have it in your crop or scrap cut settings, feel free to give us a call at the support line. I'll put it up at the end of this webinar here. Um, give us a call and let us jump in there and take a look with you and just make sure everything looks good. Uh, we can sometimes make adjustments to the post if, if your post doesn't have the settings for reverse line. Um, but a lot of the times now we're, we're seeing a lot of the fiber lasers using these settings and we're getting really good results. So um, I'll leave this here for a moment just so you can reference it. Um, but you can also come back and watch this or give us a call. We can always help you set up these, these settings as well. Now reverse line lead-ins is kind of the, the last thing I wanted to go through with you um, just to make sure we understand what's going on with that. So uh, we always talk about the reverse line lead-ins paired with that height sensing. And, and that's just a, that just provides a really safe solution to approaching and exiting the sheet edge um, that eliminates the chances of the head crashing. Now I can kind of show you what it's doing with this. Um, so I'm actually going to clear this off and just do a little bit of a uh, crop cut here just because it's a little simpler to see. Um, so we'll apply that here and you'll see that again. Now if we open up the NCI, and I'll kind of get down towards the very bottom, you can see this is this is the right at the start of this. So it's going to make its uh, last cut and move over here. Now the it's going to kind of start the crop process. So you can see that it's going to um, make its cut, start its cut. It's going to turn the height sensor off. So it's going to probe the height and then turn the height sensor off. And then it's going to basically lead off of the sheet and do a flame off. And then it's going to come back in, turn the height sensor back on. And the next move it's going to make is going to be the crop cut. So you'll see it cuts all the way through. There we go. All the way up to the top. And you'll see it kind of stops a little short. It's going to turn the height sensor off again. So we're going to make sure we're not going to have that height sensor off when we jump off the sheet. And then it's going to make its lead out. And then that's the end of the program there. So that's what that reverse line lead-in is doing. It's basically doing a soft pierce or a pierce and then moving off of the sheet. So it's going to pierce, move away from the sheet, turn the flame off, turn the height sensor back on, and then make it cut across the sheet and do the same thing on the other side, basically turn the height sensor off before it exits the sheet. Um, so that's really important. That's one of the big things with these trunk posts is that they're very particular to make sure that we are safe uh, when we're approaching and exiting those, those sheet edges. Um, so uh, that's just one of the major things I wanted to go through. Um, now, if you guys have any questions specifically about this, type them in the chat uh, as we go along here. Um, if you're watching this after it's been recorded um, or you're not present for today, go ahead, shoot us an email at the support email address, give us a call at the support line. Uh, we're more than happy to help with any of the, any issues you're having with, with Trump specifically with, with scrap cutting or crop cutting. Um, if you have any additional questions, type them in. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, and again, if you need anything else, we're always, we're always happy to help. So with that, we will go ahead and open it up for any questions anybody has. Um, again, down there I have the Connect site, our support email address, and our support phone number. The Connect site is great. Um, it's got really a lot of helpful information in there if you ever need uh, to just kind of look up a setting. Uh, another big thing I'll always point out is when you're going through these settings, again, with uh, things like crop cutting, when we open this up, uh, this little question mark in the corner, uh, you know, maybe you have a question about what one of these settings does. Uh, if you hit that little question mark up there, uh, you can see it opens up to the crop sheet section. So if you wanted to know what each of those crop settings does, uh, it's going to give you this example here. So if I wanted to know what the horizontal preference does, uh, you can click and get an image here really quick uh, or the L shape here. And it's going to give you a, a description as well as an image to, to reference off of there. And a really good set of um, instructions and just general information for each setting there. Uh, and this is basically the entire manual for the software. So you can go through um, all the different settings of any different portion of the software as well, not just crop and scrap, uh, just tons of different information here. Um, very useful if you want to use it. All right, so again, if you have any questions, please put them below uh, in the chat. We'll answer those before we wrap up here. And lastly, I just want to thank everybody uh, for either watching this or being here with us today. Um, we're always happy to help. If you have suggestions for uh, future videos, again, you can email our support address uh, or get in touch with us by phone. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and we really appreciate you joining us today.